everyone, I'm Julia Park from Advantage America EB-5 Group and today I'm going to talk about the difference between a direct EB-5 and regional center EB-5 project. We've discussed in a previous video that EB-5 projects located in what is designated as a TEA or targeted employment area qualifies for half a million dollar investments while projects that are not located in TEAs require a $1 million investment. But because 99% of regional center projects are located in TEAs, the half a million dollar amount is often used synonymously with the regional center amount. But in fact, a direct EB-5 project can also qualify for a half a million dollar minimum investment as long as the project is located in a TEA. In other words, the investment amount differs on the location of the project, not whether the investment type is direct or regional center. Let's look at some numbers to gain perspective on the issue. In fiscal year 2016, there were a total of 9,947 EB-5 visas issued. Of that total, 9,088 visas were issued for half a million dollar regional center projects, while only 13 visas were issued for $1 million regional center projects. 573 visas were issued for half a million dollar direct EB-5 projects, while 273 visas were issued for $1 million direct EB-5 projects. So basically, 90% of visas were issued for regional center projects, while 97% of all EB-5 visas were issued for half a million dollar projects. Then, if it's not the investment amount, what exactly is the difference between a direct EB-5 project and a regional center EB-5 project? And what are the reasons that most EB-5 visas are claimed by regional center deals? The default program that Congress first introduced in 1990 was the direct EB-5 program, where one foreign investor would come to the United States, invest $1 million into a U.S. business, and create 10 full-time W-2 jobs. But the prospect of running a business in a foreign country and also creating 10 full-time jobs was probably too much for somebody who, by definition, was new to the United States. And as a result, the program didn't get much traction. So in 1993, Congress introduced two variations to the original program. The first variation was to introduce the concept of targeted employment areas. So the new rule said if the job creation happens to be in a TEA, then the minimum investment would be reduced from $1 million to half a million dollars. Targeted investment areas are either rural areas or high unemployment areas based on census tract data. The second variation, which was independent of the TEA rules, was to introduce the concept of regional centers. A regional center is basically a company that receives a designation from the USCIS to sponsor projects that create jobs that qualify for EB-5 immigrant visas. The biggest difference between a direct EB-5 project and regional center EB-5 project then is the fact that in direct projects, you need to create and maintain 10 full-time W-2 jobs, while in regional center projects, you're allowed to use the economic impact of the entire project to calculate indirect jobs. The regional center is then allowed to allocate the indirect jobs among different investors, usually in the order the people receive their conditional green cards. This allows a project to have many more jobs than counting only W-2 workers, which is why regional center projects tend to be larger than direct DB5 projects. Let's use a hotel construction project as an example. A 50-room hotel could probably hire about 20 people full-time. Since one EB-5 investor needs to create 10 full-time jobs to qualify for a visa, if the hotel were to raise EB-5 financing at half a million dollars each, then basically it could raise $1 million since it has enough jobs to accommodate two investors. But if the same project is run through a regional center, then the construction expenditure could be used as an input for an economic jobs model that can capture the indirect job creation effect of the project. YouTube is not the best medium to explain how these job models work, 
so I'll skip over that part. But assuming about $20 million is spent in the construction of the hotel, and the construction lasts for over two years, the project would roughly translate into having an indirect job effect of over 200 jobs, which means the same hotel project would create enough jobs for 20 investors, which means it could raise up to $10 million as opposed to $1 million for the direct DB5 project. So the reason there are more visas issued to people who invest in regional centers compared to direct deals is that there are just more regional center deals. And that's because more funds can be raised in a regional center deal, which makes it more attractive to developers or businesses looking at EB-5 as a financing tool. That said, there will always be people who want more control over the business that is responsible for creating the jobs they need to secure their permanent green cards. So for people seeking more control over the investment company, the direct EB-5 would be a better fit than the relatively passive regional center EB-5 projects. But even for these types of entrepreneurs, the direct EB-5 program is less attractive than it was before because of the mismatch in the timing of investment and when people can actually come into the United States on an EB-5 visa. Let me explain. As I mentioned earlier, the initial intent of the program was to encourage investment by foreigners and have them come into the United States to directly build businesses that would hire people. So this is how that was supposed to work. An investor would identify a U.S. business to invest in or come up with a business idea for his EB-5 investment. Then he would prepare the necessary funding, either half a million dollars or one million dollars, depending on the location of the project, and prepare a business plan and then file an I-526 petition. The petition would be approved in two or three months and then the investor would process the visa and within about six months of the filing and investment, he would be in the United States to open and run the business and have about two years to create 10 jobs. And then at the end of the two-year conditional period, he would file an I-829 to show the USCIS that the 10 W-2 jobs were in fact created. But this no longer works because currently it's taking approximately two years to get a conditional green card. So let's say a foreign investor has spent time and money and effort probably traveling to the United States multiple times to identify a business that she wants to invest in and create 10 jobs. Let's say she decided to open and operate a restaurant since that creates a lot of direct jobs. She now has to prepare the direct EB-5 business plan and invest the funds into the business in order to be able to file the I-526 petition. But that EB-5 petition won't be approved for another year and a half, and then another six months is required for green card processing. So basically, she won't be able to enter the United States for another two years. So while theoretically, she could hire a manager to operate the restaurant until she's able to come into the United States two years later, you can see that because it's taking so long to get the conditional green card, Someone creating their own business and creating jobs, which is the old direct EB-5 model, no longer works. That means that the few direct EB-5 deals that we saw above that are being filed today are no longer based on this model of setting up your own business. Rather, they are direct EB-5 projects that are set up by third parties looking to attract EB-5 investors, which is similar to the regional center EB-5 projects. For example, if someone is opening up a factory, which would create 60 full-time W-2 workers, that business could start an EB-5 project that would accommodate six foreign investors. So in terms of relying on someone else to run the business, direct EB-5 deals are pretty similar to the regional center deals. Finally, people often ask which is better, a regional center EB-5 or direct EB-5? As a regional center operator, of course I think regional center EB-5s are better. But in all seriousness, there's nothing inherently better or worse about a regional center or direct EB-5 deal. It all depends on whether the business is a good business. That said, bringing an EB-5 deal to the market takes a long time. Our deals can take at minimum six months, if not longer, to pull together. 
So if you're considering putting together a direct EB-5 deal for yourself, you have to be realistic about how long it will take to lay the business groundwork. I hope you found this helpful. See you in the next video. Thank you.